Are you looking for ideas for using your A2 size pattern paper from scrapbook.com? Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm here to help you make the most of your crafty supplies and time. So let's get making. Today I have A2 paper busting template for A2 cards number two. And what that means is I take an A2 size piece of paper and I make an A2 size card. Of course, the paper is A2 size, so you could simply take one of these papers and cover a card front completely with it, um, especially this really cute Happy Holidays, you mean instant card right there, especially little pops of color, that's what I would do. I would add little bits of pops of color or like glitter or something like that on top of it because there's, there's glitter pops of color too. Okay, so this new collection is the Gingerbread Collection from scrapbook.com and they did send it to me in advance to make some inspiration for you. So it is part of a live stream deal that is happening the day this video is released and it'll be on sale, usually like two days. Um, I don't know the exact details because it's in advance of the sale, but you can check that out and see if you're interested. Links will be in the video description, um, but maybe you just like pieces of it and you can purchase those separately as well. So there's the Sweet Christmas stamp set. I love the sentiment, you're the icing to my gingerbread. I think that's super cute, but the one I probably use the most is just the very simple sending warm hugs. I use a lot of simple sentiments, but I really like the larger size one. Merry everything and happy always is um, a, a good a one I like a lot as well. Okay. Then there is this um, gingerbread cookies die set, and I don't even have all of them, but you get, I'll show you by flipping it over to the back, that you'll get enough to make a um, two gingerbread people, a snowman gingerbread kind of cookie, where you can do like a sugar cookie, and then the tree cookie. And of course you can use these in different ways. They don't have to be cookies, like if you were just cutting the tree out of green. Um, and then the happy holiday sentiment, which is really cute and looks like a gingerbread cookie if you do it with brown and white icing, um, like brown cookie and white icing, but you don't have to. So I, I like a sentiment included in die sets too, because I love sentiment dies. So then there's the gingerbread paper. This particular paper busting template works best with non-directional pattern paper, but there is some flexibility and I'm gonna show you how you could use it if you have a piece of paper that has directionality on one side and not the other, um, just to be a little bit more flexible, but as is, it's meant for non-directional pattern paper. So you can go ahead and get that um, PDF download for free in the video description and we're going to get started with cutting our paper. We need to cut it to one and a half inches. Um, this Tim Holtz trimmer is marked with quarter inch marking, so that makes it a little bit easier to find what is really that um, half inch quickly. I am still fairly new to this trimmer, as most of us are, because it is a, a newer product on the market, but I, because I keep planning to like lift this. You don't actually really need to. You can kind of just slide it through. Okay, and then so that's one and a half by five and a half. Do that twice. And then this is one and a quarter, and I'm gonna cut it to two and three quarters. And so then I have these four rectangles, because I did cut two pieces of paper, and then these four rectangles and we're going to use those to create our cards today. Now you probably want to create mats for these. You don't have to do this. This is always kind of an optional step, particularly here with the um, red paper. Because it is so bold, it's really going to stand off of your white background just fine. But if you want the mats, totally go for it. The white paper on the other hand, the white with the dots and on the back, it's mostly white as well then I would really recommend either a patterned card stock, or sorry, a colored card base, or putting mats on it. I'm gonna do mats, so I'll go into one of my A2 collections. This is a Christmas collection, so there's like a good chance some of it's going to match, and I wanna pick something pretty bold. The template will also tell you what size um, mats you're gonna need, so I'm going to need some one and three quarters, or 1.75 inch mats for the stripes. These are what I picked for the um, dot paper. I will say cutting mats out of the A2 cardstock does tend to leave a fair amount of scraps. Those are great for die cutting and other things, but um, if you wanna use an eight and a half by 11 piece of solid cardstock, by all means, go for it. So we're gonna need a piece that is three, 
See, I keep lifting it up. I don't need to. Um, and then the one and a half, which is right here. Come to the one and a half again. So it's held up a little bit as these like, um, like, what is that called? It, like it holds it up and it pushes it down. Spring action. That's the word I'm looking for. The phrase I'm looking for is spring action. So, and then those will be those mats. So I'll cut some from my red paper as now well. I'm ready to assemble my cards based on the sketch, which shows me to put one of them lengthwise. Can line it up here. This is the scrapbook.com mat, and it gives you like an A2 size card outlined so that you can make sure things are straight. Line up your card with the outline, and then you can line up your different elements with the stripes in the background. So, oh, I actually want this to be a little bit higher. Luckily, oh, you know what? I might just have to call it there. <laughs> Sometimes the adhesive just does not want to come back up. So then we're going to put the other piece um, to the right side and um, a little bit like overhanging it down. But I wanted to show you the alternative. So I had that red paper and it had the ho ho ho, which was a directional pattern. Um, on the back side, it was solid red. So I want to show you a modification that you can do with this sketch. So instead of putting it as a horizontal card. I'm going to go vertical and I'm going to then take my second piece, which again is non-directional because it's solid. So if it were, you know, it would look like that. So I could put it here like this if I had another directional piece or because it's non-directional, I can turn it on its side. There's like so many possibilities often, especially with these simpler sketches, that you can adapt them to whatever you prefer to do. But I just like to give you, you know, one suggestion as a starting point and show you how to cut the paper with no scraps. Because sometimes that is the hardest part is coming up with the even measurements that it would all take. And so then we are ready to embellish our cards. I think I'm going to use the trees today because I thought of a couple different ways of doing them. But here are the little gingerbread people. This one I um, did with all the little die cuts and I am die cut challenged. I glued that button like way off to the side <laughs> because those teeny tiny pieces, they can get me. I have the little like presser tool and all that, but um, the second one I drew his face on and it's a little crooked, but I turned out pretty good. So as an alternative to cutting out all those small pieces, you can take a white marker and draw in some details on your gingerbread um, cookies and shapes and all that. Um, but so the back of the packaging shows the gingerbread tree like this with some, you know, traced white icing. However, it also die cuts all of those negative pieces. And so I also glued one of the trees. So I cut two background trees and then I glued one with the lined icing and one with the solid icing because I thought that was a fun effect. But I also think it'd be super cute to cut it twice, once with white, and then maybe again with like a green or some other fun color and add that in and do a two-toned look for your tree cookie. And then the final thing is um, I put Cloud Whip through a stencil to decorate the tree. So this is a stencil from scrapbook.com. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but um, I will, I'll link it in the video description with everything else. And then I just use some Cloud Whip from scrapbook.com through it and put a pattern on my cookie, which I thought was pretty fun as well. Um, you could of course cut it out of fun patterned paper. I think there's a, a stripey paper here that would look like some fun icing on a cookie. And so if you lined up your tree with those stripes, that could look really cute too. And you wouldn't have to decorate it. I'm all about trying to find some ways to not have to die cut every little piece sometimes because I think it makes things a little bit faster. Okay, so I, this has a lot of white already, so I probably would want to use the tree that has less white on it. And then maybe I could use the more white tree on this one. Although I have these Happy Holidays. I really love how they look also like decorated cookies. And they're a little bit big for my rectangle here. And one of the reasons I didn't want this one to be um, like, 
uh, vertical is because I wanted more space for my sentiment. So you know, I could put my tree up high, really move it out of the way, and leave some room for my sentiment on this card or, you know, mix it up like that. Whereas if it was that long vertical strip, that would be much harder to do. And so I could adhere those down. I could switch it out. I think this one would look cute as well. Although again, because it's kind of a busier card, I do like the simple, maybe this goes a little better over there. I salvaged my gingerbread person, moved the little button over, and then I had to put the, you're the icing to my gingerbread in white pigment ink, but I do think embossing would have looked a little better. We already did it. So if you found this video helpful, here's another video where you can find more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. Let me know you like this video with a share to your crafty community, subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next template or tutorial, and check the video description for product links. See you in the next video.